Hey, this is John Horn from Stud Group, and today I'm excited to be joined by David Weinstein. Uh, David is from the company John F. Schuster. They're a web development and design company based out of the Seattle area, and I'm excited to chat with David today about all things web and, and web design and what he sees going on in 2024 and what his agency is, is focused on. So, David, thank you so much for joining me, and uh, please, if you would, tell us, tell us a little bit more about who you are and your company to kick things off here. All right. Um, yes. Thank you so much for introducing me, John. Uh, yeah. Again, my name is David. Um, I work for JohnFSchuster.com. And a little bit about myself is that um, I started my website design journey about five years ago. Um, I got a front end website design um, degree out of uh, every community college. And then afterwards, I was hired out um, from a person from my church, John Schuster, um, and have been able to successfully build my portfolio and have like no college or student loan debt um, from, from doing that. So uh, yeah, it's been a really fun journey and I'm excited to share my experiences. That is fantastic. Um, that definitely puts you in a smaller percentile of people who've been able to, to reach that point and get out of that debt load. So kudos to you on accomplishing that. Yeah, no, it was a, it was a big accomplishment. And I'm su I was uh, super excited to uh, not have like 20,000 or like 200,000. I See, I don't even know what the, what the debt, debt rate would have been. So excited just not to be dealing with it. That's awesome. Well, yeah, here at Stub Group, we are very passionate about websites, not because we do a lot of you know in-house design development ourselves, but because on the paid search and paid social sign side of things, which is what we're focused on, we are driving traffic to our clients' websites. And it is so crucial what the experience looks like, how they're optimized, how they perform to actually be able to make successful campaigns. And so we spend a lot of time on our side, you know, talking to our clients about their websites, about ways they can improve it and also often you're recommending hey here's a partner to go work with to to make that happen so i guess jumping into some of the questions that are top of mind for me right now um obviously we just started 2024 we're recording this conversation early in 2024 thinking about the year that's coming up um are there any you know top trends that you're seeing in web design and development that you think are going to come more to the forefront in 2024 or things that you're you know, on top of preparing for right now um, I think that as far as like design trends uh, is concerned, there's a lot of there's a big push towards um, both minimalism and maximalism, which I think is very interesting. Where uh, maximalism, uh, the way they that it's been described is it's very much more focused on like pop art, and so using a lot more bolder colors, using a lot more bolder fonts, and trying to use that to really stand out from the crowd. Um, the last couple of years have been really dominated by minimalism, um, where it's more mostly focused on like um, simpler images and just a lot more white space. And I think that that's been really good for like these smaller businesses that maybe don't have like as much budget to give towards website design. Uh, but I think that that's uh, created this weird backlash effect that you always see when it comes to like different industries where like you spend all your time like focusing on like, oh, like we should use like black and white backgrounds, stuff like that to somebody comes around and is like, well, everybody's using black and white backgrounds. So why don't we use like pink or neon and start like really, really uh, doing like different things for the websites. And so those are the design trends and then seeing where website traffic's coming from is going to be really interesting in the future as well with uh, the emergence of AI and things coming up of that nature. Absolutely. That's interesting. So you got the teeter totter of, okay, well, you know, some people start doing X to stand out from the crowd and then everyone's like, oh yeah, that works. Let's go do that. And suddenly, you know, the people at the point of the spear are now doing what everyone else does. Now they have to go do something different just to stand out from that. That's uh it kind of reminds me of like in graphic design, I had to study like uh, graphic design history and um, and Sweden came out with kind of like that simple modernistic style. And then there was like the subgroup called like, um, they're called the Dadaists, um, which is a ridiculous name because they had like a ridiculous style where they would literally like put fonts like that was completely ineligible and uh, do like different posters and stuff like that. And they would just have like, oh, there all of a sudden would be like a head bust or something like in the middle of the paper. And it had like no rhyme or reason for being there. And I don't think websites are ever going to get to that point because you still ultimately have to sell your product. Um, uh, but it's interesting to, to see this like backlash um, uh, happen because of like because the uh, websites have been dominated by the uh, minimalist aesthetic for like the last five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. Do you have a, a preference yourself in terms of which style you prefer to design in? 
Um, I've, I've mainly designed in the minimalistic style because again, we work a lot with like these smaller businesses. And so mm -hmm. what they're focused on is selling their services above all else. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you could still get away with, um, with using bolder colors though um, and still keep it simple, like using simple headlines and stuff like that. But it's definitely a more artistic style. Um, and I specialize mostly in uh, modernistic styles. Though I, I would love to hire a graphic designer uh, to really like pitch wilder ideas for websites in the future. <laughs> Awesome, oh, I love it. Well, you mentioned um, AI a minute ago, and that's actually one of the things I wanted to ask you about too. How do you see AI impacting web design and content as well this year? Um, as far as content, I mean, like it's already impacted content like significantly. Um, a lot of a lot of blogs are able to generate. Um, just loads and loads of content. Like you're able to write like a weekly blog now so much easier than you were ever able to do. Like you don't have to hire necessarily like a bunch of writers to research your topic as deeply. Um, I still feel it needs a little bit of human touch because it does still sound robotic. But um, the way that it's, the way that AI and ChatGPT is able to generate written content is, um, is astounding. Um, as far as website design and where it's going to go with website design, I think that's, What's interesting is image generation is definitely going to be more prevalent. It's going to be interesting to see like how website design is going to affect iconography specifically, because um, I've, I've definitely seen a trend where um, instead of using just like very simple icons, they use uh, uh, people have been using more, more and more like highly defined icons as well. And so that's going to definitely affect website design. I think there's going to be a lot more a lot more interesting images uh, being produced um, through programs like Midjourney, um, and then as far as UX UI, um, I don't see, I don't see a program that's like super well at doing that quite yet, and it doesn't account for, um, I don't think it accounts for like animation or things like that. That's also been really prevalent in website design as of as of late, but eventually it's going to get to a point where like a lot of a lot of simple wireframes I think are going to be utilizing AI in some way. And so I think that that's going to be that's going to be a really interesting change as well. Um, being able to just send a client a wireframe after like two seconds of talking to them <laughs> and like just writing out like what their what their outline is is going to be a, it's going to be really interesting. Totally, that makes a lot of sense. Kind of related to that, something I, I had no idea if this is a thing or not, but curious to get your take on it. I, I hear a lot of people talking about how their, their engineers, their coders are using AI, using Copilot tools to, you know, help them with code creation, um, you know, up level junior engineers, designers, things like that. Do you think that the existence of those tools will encourage more people to move away from some of the kind of do it yourself platforms like Squarespace and Wix because someone who doesn't know code can now make something more custom? Or do you still think that most people who kind of don't know what they're doing are going to stick with those DIY platforms? I mean, that's, that's a really good question. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that the DIY platforms are still going to stick around mainly due to marketing. Like I think that because Squarespace has like such, such great marketing, like there's no way that it like goes out of style, like in the near future, um, as far as like, um, like do it yourself solutions though. Um, I don't think like, unless, unless we're saying that like AI can like completely custom code a website from scratch. Um, I don't think, I don't think that that's going to, going to, um, again, remove people from, from doing a, um, from using like a Squarespace or a Wix in that, in that instance, I'd like it to, cause I don't really, I don't particularly like working, um, specifically in Wix. Um, I don't particularly like working in Wix, but, um, but yeah, and then also the visual element of it as well, like until AI can figure out a way to also, cause like code, code doesn't look beautiful. You know, it's just like, it's a written language. And so unless it's able to generate like a preview of what your website will look like as well. And uh, people are able to figure out how to insert images and insert like different text blocks and stuff like that through AI. Um, I don't think, um, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon that we're going to see see that that kind of takeover as like the primary source of uh, do it yourself uh, DIY projects. But hey, I could be wrong. <laughs> so. Yeah, Wix uh, Wix is an interesting one. Uh, we recently brought on a, a client running Google Ads for them, and they have a Wix website, and they they needed us to help with just you know, a couple of kind of straightforward things on the back end, tweaking a few things. And I'm like, yeah, we can we can help with that, but yeah, Wix not my not my favorite platform. Put it put it that way. 
find that uh, its mobile design um, is like wonky. Like the fact that you have to like actually go in and like uh, really really look at the mobile templates and like move mm -hmm. stuff around. Um, mm -hmm. is, is, I've never really been that big of a fan of it. <laughs> So, yep. But I don't want this whole podcast to be a dunking on Wix. <laughs> Wix no, not at all. Situation. Wix, Wix yeah. also has, uh, you know, it's it's a great tool for a lot of people out there who, who you know, would yeah. never be able to have any kind of website out there um, if they had to do things themselves. So, you know, it fits it fits a need for sure. And then when you need something more more complicated, more complex, that's where companies like like your company comes in to execute on that in a better in a better fashion. Also, well, speaking of new things this year, are there any new tools or technologies that you're using or excited about using right now um, in, the, in the web design, development, or any other space that you're that you're in? Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm like getting really excited about like getting more involved in Shopify and mm -hmm. especially how Shopify uses their apps. Um, there's always like different functionality and different apps that are coming out on Shopify, so it'll be really interesting to see. Uh, what different services are going to be are going to be included with apps? Um, one thing that we used um, that we used last year that wasn't wasn't quite up to par, but it was still like an interesting idea was um, we had this client that did um, that does like patterns, like um, like floral patterns and stuff like that, where you print mm -hmm. out um, you print it out on sheets, and they wanted a tool where you can like preview the sheet and then it, you can have it like duplicate and it can show you like what it's going to look like on scale of what mm -hmm. the sheet was. And we were able to find an app that did something like that, uh, but not quite. Um, and so we, we spent a lot of time doing customization, stuff like that. And so seeing seeing how all these different companies are going to try to provide like do-it-yourself solutions where all you have to do is install an app or in WooCommerce's case, install like a plugin. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see uh, where where that goes. Um, and then uh, figuring out how to use it, utilize AI more in our content creation as well has been uh, has been a journey that we've been on through this last year. But as AI gets more and more advanced, it's going to be um, it's going to be interesting to see where that goes as well. And excited excited to use that. Have you done much with like AR and the augmented reality of? helping people visualize maybe on a product page, what a product looks like in their space or anything along those lines. I know I've, I've looked at lots of kind of apps and services in that space and there's an incredible range of pricing, I'll say, in terms of what that can cost. But any, have you, have you done much in that space? We haven't done much in that space. We've definitely seen, like we got really close to doing it. The problem is with, um, with the, the clients that we work with, um, to pay twenty thousand dollars for like one functionality is like mm -hmm. very—it's a very tough sell. Um, one thing that we saw that we were looking at was we were looking at um, partnering with another agency to do a um, a visual builder for bracelets, and so like this other company figured out a way to have like this entire uh, this other jewelry company, I should say, um, had had this way of having their entire bracelet catalog, which included like probably probably a thousand or so bracelets, where they're able to. They were able to um, select different stacks, and then the bracelets would stack on top of each other, and you could see how it looked within that within that stack. And if you sat, if that sounds like super complicated to you, like having like a little bit of website development, it it, it is incredibly difficult because yeah. thinking about like how how do you have um, how do you like conditionally logic that the position of each stack, like if this one's here, then stack this one here, and it just it. We knew that it was going to be like a really massive project, and we tend to s typically stay away from those. But um, I don't know; it's something. It's something that um, if we get the right client, we're definitely going to look to partner with uh, an agency and try to try to get uh, done for for uh, for them. That's awesome. Well, speaking of the right client, um, could you describe, you know, for those watching who might say, "Hey, I'd love to reach out and, you know, see if you're a good fit." What what is your ideal type of client or business or project that you um, would love to work more with? Um, so we really do have like two different sets of clients. Um, we are based in the Seattle area, and so we do a lot of work with um, local with local small business clients um, that. That particularly need leads. So we've done work with chiropractors. Uh, we're working with a plumber right now, um, and we've done um, custom home home leads as well. Um, typically, what we do is we use our resources to help boost um, local SEO, um, which stands for search engine optimization. So you get better search ra rankings in Google. Um, we have a tool that um, that helps out with that. We optimize your Google My Business listings, help you get reviews, and so. So that's a that's a pretty good client, and that's a pretty um, sustainable way to get leads. Um, where like the benefit of SEO being that um, 
compared to marketing is like once you turn off marketing, uh, your leads go away. Whereas SEO is very, very is a lot more sustainable, and you're able to keep that ranking for a lot longer. Um, mm-hmm. So that's the kind of client we typically work with. And then we also we're branching out more. We've done a lot of e-commerce work, but we want to really hit like kind of the the smaller to medium size e-commerce stores. Um, uh, if you whether you're interested in Shopify or WooCommerce, we've done both, um, and we have a lot of a lot of experience doing um, doing both. And so, if you're making around like five million dollars in e-commerce sales, um, we can help we can help boost and help um, redesign your website as well. So that's those are our two like ideal clients. Awesome. Well, if you're watching this video and that uh, sounds like you, um, we'll we'll link up uh, David and John F. Schuster's contact info in the description this, for this video, so you can go check them out and uh, see if you can work something out there. And I'm, I will say I'm, I'm a little bit jealous um, of you being in the Seattle area. I have spent quite a bit of time, got some family in that area, and it's a little bit prettier than than my home digs here in Texas. But uh, at least we have. Well, some. it's yeah. yeah, it's really pretty in the summer. Right now we're in um, we're in the gray the gray area right now. So it's just constantly. Um, it's never it never like rains so hard that it becomes like a problem like in um, some eastern states. Um, but it, it's always, it's just always gray, gray and muggy and you have to, you almost have to start off just, uh, your morning with coffee just to like feel re-energized every morning. So <laughs> that's why we have so many Starbucks. <laughs> you know? Yeah, seriously. You have so many, I, I remember, you know, also I could see three Starbucks from one place. All right. That corner, that corner and inside of, you know, that, that grocery store all right there. Awesome. Well, in terms of you know keeping up to date with how things are changing obviously things are always changing in in our space of digital advertising and websites and whatnot are there any particular resources could be websites email newsletters fill in the blank that you like to um to leverage to stay on top of what is changing in the space yeah um there's um i typically listen to a lot of different podcasts i mean i know there's one called like code cox that i listen to um, I've also been experimenting, uh, going into different Slack channels as well. Um, one of the Slack channel I recommend is, um, Big Orange Heart is a, um, is a Slack channel that I would recommend like any freelancer get, get on. Um, I'm really big into the mental health space and, uh, they provide free resources to help with, uh, mental health and, uh, for, for freelancers and, um, they have like general business advice. Um, I also recommend, um, also, yeah, I use YouTube a lot as like a primary resource as well. Um, cause I, the way I design websites is I try to think of it from like those three different aspects, one being design, two being SEO, and then three being marketing. And so I try to, I try to like make sure that I'm, uh, in contact with all three of those. Um, so doing like webinars for like, um, systems like go high level has been really important in terms of like research and doing, seeing what like different marketers are thinking about um, this next year. And then also um, Matt Diggity, who's like an SEO expert, um, has has uh, really interesting content when it comes to SEO uh, that I've been paying attention to. And so those are kind of my main resources for like uh, thinking about website design and where the internet is going in the next 10 to 20 years, right? Fantastic. Yeah, those are some great recommendations. I'm going to check those out myself and put those in the descriptions, links to those. So anybody watching this or listening to this can go check those out as well. Let me ask you, um, let me change gears a little bit here. Um, Something that is very near and dear to me is page speed and how quickly websites load because well, A, from this personal side of things, I hate going to a website and then it taking forever for things to load that I want to see. And then B, you know, I can see the data of just how impactful that is on conversion rates for websites. And, you know, I hate it when we're sending traffic to a client's website, paying for, for that traffic to get there. And then it's taking so long to load that I know that a bunch of people are just bouncing back because people don't have patience these days. So it's a long, a long winded way of getting around to asking this question. But, you know, as, as you look at, page speed optimization and load times in 2024. Are there any strategies, tools, approaches, um, you know, testing methodologies that you like to use or want to use further as you try and make sure that sites load as quickly as possible? Yeah, uh, again, like the main methodology we use is we use uh, platforms such as, well, Google has its own page speed test uh, that you can use um, that 
And it's now, I believe now it's uh, considering that in terms of ranking as well. So having your website, not only is it a benefit just to keeping your clients on the site, it actually does affect Google rankings. And so that's something that we're taking into consideration uh, this year in 2024. Um, And then as far as like what it takes to make a really fast website um, and like what strategies you can use to keep your websites fast. I think that a lot of people are going to be really focusing on one page landers um, because one page like landing pages are always going to be fat, like fast. Right. And so I was on this webinar with go high level where they were like, they, they like just created this like really simple and quite frankly, like disgustingly ugly, (laughs) like website (laughs) page lander. But the benefit of uh, making it so simple and making it uh, and making it so fast was that people were able to check out and get a lead like as quickly as possible. And Mm -hmm. so I think you're going to see a prevalence of that. And I don't know. um, I don't know if I'm a fan of it, but I I think that that's going to be just like when you click on a Facebook ad and you just you're going to see like a one page landing page. Um, I think that that's going to be way more prevalent in the next coming years. And then I think there's going to be a movement away from um, from visual builders. Um, WordPress, WordPress has, um, I think, had this problem for a while where they 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 in order to like make sure that your client is able to update their website easily you had to download a visual builder such as divi and such as elementor and while both both those visual builders are trying their best to optimize and make make their make their visual builder faster on websites i just don't think i don't think that's the best solution if you're if you're really focusing on website speed i think if if you really want your WordPress site to really load quickly, you're gonna to have to use the default uh, Gutenberg editor and get more familiar with that. Um, and or just custom code, just custom code uh, most of your website, uh, which is gonna cost more, but um, as, for, as far as performance, you're probably saving more in the long run when it comes to um, losing sales, right? Cause that's, that's ultimately what I, like, unfortunately that's ultimately what websites are really all about. Like I, I like to look at them as like beautiful art pieces, like from my designer brain, but ultimately the whole point of a website is to, is to get a customer and to get a sale. And so making sure that you, making sure that you have a developer that um, is using more custom code versus like, like putting a bunch of plugins on your website is going to be uh, really important moving forward. Got it. That's that's a good segue into another question I wanted to ask you about. It's kind of open ended. Go go with this where you where you would like. Um, oh, I would. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so you've got you know when you got a new website, new landing page, you've got um, con- the content on there, and then you've got the design. And sometimes I feel like people think of those as two separate things, but obviously they're they're incredibly connected in terms of what you're saying, communicating, and then how that looks. So. Let's say when you're, you know, starting out with a new a new customer, how do you navigate that process of of content versus design and and kind of getting both created? How do you do you start with the design, then put the content? Do you start with the content and design? Do they both get created at the same time? It's kind of what does that what does that process look like on your end? Yeah, typically for my end, it starts with the design. And so what we'll do in terms of like client um, client relationship and making sure that their vision is uh, present is we'll start with like a program like um, Figma, um, which is what I recommend as like a designing tool um, where you're able to send the client your actual design files that you've created and they're able to directly comment on where they want specific things to be, what, what specific content they would potentially want. And so when I'm designing, like I just put in placeholder content and then when I send over that file, that's when the, that's when the client can say specifically what they want uh, the website to say. Um, we then look at it as well and then we think of it, that's when we start thinking about it from like an SEO perspective. It's like, okay, the, they want this to say, they want this H1 to say like uh, most beautiful tree in like the Northwest or something like that. And mm-hmm. we're looking at it, it's like, well, I mean, it's great that you have a beautiful tree, but like this is a chiropractic website and we probably need that, <laughs> that word chiropractic in the, in the uh, H1. Um, so we start looking and that's when we start kind of designing the content, but really it is kind of, it, it really, it is still kind of the two separate things, right? Cause copywriting is like its own art form in of itself. And so making sure that we we get the design right first and then start putting in the content is uh, typically how we do that. That makes sense. Awesome. I'm I'm always curious to hear how how designers and devs approach that. So that makes a lot of sense. Well, another question I had for you, kind of switching back to the e-commerce side of things. Um, Are there any 
key things that you are looking at you know, incorporating into an e-commerce website in particular to make sure that it's as effective as possible at, like you said, generating sales. That's the goal of an e-commerce you know, platform. Are there any key things you should do or not do in your experience for e-commerce websites? Um, I think there's like a big push in terms of like uh, what you can do for e-commerce website. I think there's been a big push of using like um, sliding ba banners uh, for e-commerce websites. And uh, especially like on the homepage, right? You get to the homepage and then it's like, oh, here's a sale and it swipes. And then here's a sale and it swipes. And unfortunately, like that comes with a lot of code and it comes with a lot of uh, bloat on the website on your homepage. Um, so just making sure... I would recommend just making sure that you have like one banner that's your one sale for that month or for that week um, is is highly important um, because it will it will help with your website load and it will help um, it will help with um, with sales just because of that website load. Um, as far as like effectiveness and e-commerce sites, like everybody's everybody's like trying to copy like Amazon, right? Like that's the big one that everyone tries to copy. So making sure that you have like different functionalities is really important. Um, for lead generation sites, we recommend having like a live chat so that the customer is able to directly chat with a potential lead and have it be like a paid per lead system, where if that lead ends up going into your funnel, then that's when you end up paying for that live chat. Uh, we've seen that work. Um, but as far as like e-commerce sites, it's just nice to have somebody that's there to talk to. Um, and then having functionality such as like buy now, pay later, or like having like a system where you can like uh, slowly, slowly pay in increments. Um, having like a buy now uh, button that Amazon utilizes and I think probably generates them millions of dollars in sales uh, where you just click the button and you're immediately checked out um, is something that we're looking at um, incorporating in a lot more of our e-commerce sites. And then as far as like effectiveness is concerned, um, using really specific category pages, I think is going to be really important. Um, one thing I was looking at, we were, um, cause I also work on the sales side of things. So I was looking at like different retail retail uh, stores and one thing i noticed right away is that um they'll have a collection like um like men's right like that'll be like their entire collection right and so mm -hmm. and the problem is when you use when you use men's like um um you're going to be competing with like the top agencies right you're going to be competing with like the macy's and the nordstrom's and stuff like that and so having like specific like men's jackets or even more specific like men's peacock jackets or something like that is going to be really important for generating more traffic to your website um, especially, especially now since AI is going to start taking over Google. I don't know if you've heard about this, but uh, Google is actually going to start incorporating AI answers into their search results, which I think is going to to greatly affect website traffic. And so, being ranked on the first page of Google for like very specific things, I think is going to be more important for um, how effective your e-commerce store is going to be. Yeah, yeah. No, you're 100% right. If you're watching this video, um, that that kind of concept of AI coming into the search generation or the search engine results pages is, I think they're saying SGE. I think that's the acronym for right now. I always get them mixed up. But you can go, um, there's a video I recorded with uh, Michael Cottom, uh, who is also in the SEO space, where we talk a lot about SGE and what might that look like and how is that going to impact rankings. So I definitely would recommend go and, and check that out as well because that's, that's going to be... Um, it's going to be a, a thing in 2024. Right, right. Um, it's the whole reason I invested in Google stock <laughs> this last year, because I, I knew that was going to happen. So, so yeah. So. That's awesome. Well, then you and I are both very much incentive to see Google continue to do well. But to kind of wrap things up here, you know, one one thing that here at Step Group, we often have conversations with, with leads about, you know, businesses who are thinking about becoming clients at Step Group is, okay, what does a good partnership and relationship look like? Because we like to think of things as a partnership. We're not just a widget that you're hiring to do something. We legitimately are coming on board. We're an extension of your marketing. We're gonna help you think through how can we make you successful as a business, um, certainly through the platforms we're managing like Google Ads, but also thinking strategically a big picture of how are you presenting yourself. And so, you know, we'll share a lot about you know, what does it mean to us to be a good partner to them as a client? And we'll also say, and here's, here's what a great client looks like to us. Here are the things that, you know, here's how they treat us. Here's what they share us to make sure that this partnership really works as well as possible. So as you think about that on your end, as you're talking with the leads, what are some of the things that you've identified that make a really good um, client for you that help you then be as, as helpful to them as possible and, and succeed together? I think it really just, all comes down to one thing and it's the thing that um 
I think has started wars and a thing that um, has like prevented wars and that's communication. Like, <laughs> like the only thing that really matters when it comes to how well your client and your client relationship is going to be is communication. Um, and um, so what we've done recently is we've started, we started like when we onboard a client, uh, it's very important you know, to make sure that we set up a 90 day goal plan. And so when we have those 90 days and we have those set goals, uh, we then, we then have that meeting. And then every single month we have another meeting that's just checking in on those 90 day goals on like what we're, what we're planning, what we're planning on doing, like what's like different functionality we want to add to the website, what's things that we want to take away, um, and try to see and try to see like where, where there's commonalities uh, align. But um, it's when it's when you lose contact with the client and when you when you don't meet those goals that things start to go south. And so making sure that you're staying on top of of your communication, making sure that after at the end of each meeting that you schedule another meeting and that you send reminders to the clients because they forget that the other meeting is scheduled um, is is really what we're focusing on uh, this year uh, as, as far as like client retention and making sure that our clients are happy. Um, it might be annoying, but um, it, it might be too much communication, but I'd rather have too much communication than none at all. So, Absolutely. I, I would I would way rather have a client say, you know, just talk to us too much. Stop talking to us. Then be like, hey, where have you been for the last you know three months? So could not agree more. Awesome. Well, David, thank you so much for your time. It was really a pleasure getting to speak with you. And I learned a lot uh, about your space today. I hope those watching did as well. Uh, for those watching, if they want to learn more about you, more about John F. Schuster, where are the best places online to do that? Oh uh, yeah, uh, you can just check us out on uh, johnfschuster.com. Um, that that's like the number one space that you can re can reach us at. Um, we're also doing a rebrand um, pretty soon here uh, called e-commerce jewelry, and so we're going to be launching a new website for that. That will be our primary focus for um, for our e-commerce stores. Um, and then um, you can hit me up at uh, DTW Consulting, uh, where I also I also have my own brand, which is uh, DTW Designs, but I like forward that over to JohnFSchuster.com uh, as well. But uh, you get to see my face more, <laughs> you get a little more personal experience. So I love it. Awesome. Well, David, thank you so much. Everyone watching, thank you for your time. And uh, we will see you in our next video on your feed. Until then, be safe and dominate Google Ads and all things digital advertising. <laughs>